we're going to tie a finesse worm. We begin with a Gamagatsu SL45. This is a size 4. The material we're using is a, a threads, a 3 aught mono Danville in all of it. That's because that's what I've got. And the material I'm using is Chocolate's uh, Finesse body in a medium, in both olive and black. I've got a length of it. This um, chenille is 11 inches long, and I've got a strip that's black, and another strip that's olive. And I'm going to take a red bead and string it on one of the strands of the chenille to give it some weight. As you can see, I'm using my bobbin threader to get the bead on. The bead's a, a 3 16 inch um, tungsten bead in red, because that's what I had. <laughs> and what I'm doing now is just figuring where the bead will lie. It's going to actually be a, a come together at the midpoint so that when I fold over the chenille, the twisted chenille, that it furls together and that and then the midpoint is where the end of the the worm will be. So right now I'm just trying to figure out where the placement of the beads bead should be so that it's halfway so that when I fold it in half it'll be at the end. And the 11 inches after you let it furl uh, gives me a worm anywhere between 5 to 6 inches long depending on how much twist I put on it. Now the reason I the way I got this idea was from uh, Jay Zimmerman's bass book, new bass book. And he uses dubbing, and I'm lazy. So I just, this uh, chocolate's chenille just came out. It's a brand new material, and I didn't have to use the dubbing. <laughs> and it comes out with a lot of colors, and it's already even, so it's not as much trimming. I don't need to worry about spreading it out evenly. And it looks pretty good. So right now you can see I used a uh, turbo spinner, dubbing spinner, and I was trying to get as many twists in the material as I possibly can so that it furls over properly. Now I'm also making sure that, one, that I got enough twists so that it'll furl in on each other and also so the, the bead hits at the, is at the midpoint and when I go to fold it, it's at the end of the fly. Now I've hung my uh, spinner over the top and I'm just tying it off now. I'm keeping it stressed for right now. And then I'm going to encourage it to, to, to furl, to spin on, up on each other. So then I get a really, really dense worm. And note how stiff that is because of the core, the string that's used to make that chenille. And I'm just using a brush, steel brush, just to pull out as much of the hairs as I possibly can. I'm going to tie it off. If you think about it, this is a pretty simple fly to tie. Certainly much simpler than most of the flies that I tie. Now, I'm using my crappy scissors that are cheap. These are uh, just my Fiskars, mainly because the synthetic material really plays havoc on the, on a, really dulls up uh, my good scissors. So I'm just using this. I'll use this to trim the, the uh, synthetic material. Now, I want to add a little bit of a, a midsection to the worm where it's a little fatter and lighter sometimes. 
Granted, I should make it longer, but I don't. I'm just using it at the head of the fly. Now I've taken some more of that chenille, chocolate finesse material, and I'm going to create a nice dark band in between it and the middle section of the worm. I'm just going to palmer it around the hook. Now you don't have to use this uh, gamagatsu. It's just what I had laying around once again. And it's a, actually a bonefish hook. So it's an expensive hook. You can just go with a regular old bass hook. It'll work just fine. Now I've tied it off and I'm bringing it up to the front because I'm also going to create a little head of black there. Now bring my thread back into the, uh, that band and I'm going to tie in some more of the, just the straight olive chocolates finesse material. Once again, I'm just going to palm it around there. I want a nice little section. It's probably a quarter to three inches, but it just gives it some contrast. You can see I'm stroking back the material as much as possible. Now I'm tying off my material. And once again, I'm going to trim with my, oh, I used my good scissors just to trim that chenille. Now I'm just going to finish off with the uh, black again. just to give it a little contrast. I'm going to tie off with my thread. Like everybody else, I have a tendency to crowd the head a bit, and so I'm just going to push it back and whip finish. Now, the secret to tying this fly, and Jay makes a note of it in his bass book, is I trim the heck out of it, and that's really what I'm going to do. I need to trim out a little bit of that uh, chenille from the eye of the hook. First, I'll uh, nail down the head with a little bit of uh, flow. And then trim back some of that hair, extra hair.
Now here we go with the crew cut. I gotta try to take off as much material as I can without cutting that core. And it's usually not a problem. You'll find if you use your scissors on this, man, it, it's tough. That stuff, synthetic material, is very tough to cut. It doesn't trim easily. So you gotta use some really good scissors, but you don't wanna use your good scissors on it. Now I do try to get a little bit of a taper, but it's kind of hard to tell. And I just work my way all the way around the fly. The re the way I got the the idea from this fly is from my friend, Troy Coburn. And this guy's an incredible tire and inc even a better fisherman. He has kicked my butt more than several times on the lake. But he, he talked to me one day about his philosophy on flies. And Troy loves to take, to cross it, genres. So he's taking stuff. He used to be a uh, on the pro bass tour, and he's taking a lot of things that he's learned from bass fishing. He's also a guide at one time, and crossed over, crossed it over to fly fishing. Now the guy just catches fish. That's all there is to it. It doesn't matter what kind of rod he's carrying. He just catches fish. So I got to talk with him, and he gave me some ideas, and so this is my translation of some of them. But he's got some stuff that's pretty incredible. He does that, you know, it's like uh, country music crossing over to pop. Well, he goes from your conventional bass fishing and crosses over to, to fly, and he got some, <laughs> he blows people away all the time. So... And he's one of those fly tires and fly fishermen that actually can answer why, why you do, why he does certain things. And that's not, you don't find that very often. So it also makes him extremely creative. Well, if you haven't thought of it already, you can see that you can mix and match all kinds of colors. So here I've got black and olive. You could go with uh, straight black or black with a little red. You could mix some dubbing in there to give it just a tinge of olive. Have it all black and then put some dubbing in the, in the loop to give it a little tinge of olive. Or you could go with a tinge of red. But the possibilities are incredible on this stuff. And you know, all you're doing is making a furled worm is all it is. <laughs> 